sponsor DDT, DDT, yeah. DDT, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, the bigger project. Sky project, project in DDT. Sorry? What? Mm, the name of the project. Uh, well, actually, we have uh, uh, DDT uses it through uh, yeah, several countries within Southeast Asia. And also within PPT there are different uh, uh, divisions, so PPT EP, PPT PLC. Uh, so they use it for different uh, purposes. Uh, currently we are also uh, working on a global rollout uh, with PPT. Uh, but also you should think of actual mobile, which is also related. Yeah. Do you mean that PPT only buy software from your company? Yeah. Or do you go to PPT implement uh, yes. software? Yeah, we work with uh, yeah. So we work with local partners there yeah, for the implementation of the, of the software. Uh, uh, PPT DMP or PPT uh, both. page of chemical? Uh, both. So uh, PPT global chemical, PPT GC, PPT BLC, PPT EP. Uh, currently, they're also working on the, on the group rollout. Uh, also in Southeast Asia, actual mobile. Yeah. Well, that's my understanding. Uh, PTT in different uh, software in the uh, in okay, chemical area. Uh, because I don't think yeah. PTT is in the same area. Mm -hmm. uh, PTT is in different software. Okay, uh, it could be that they, that they use different software in other divisions, but currently they are working on a global, global rollout for uh, both XP. Uh, another big client is Petronas. Yeah. Uh, okay, Burgundy oil. Uh, I, uh, actually, I would like to hear uh, the name of the company. I would like to hear the name of the project. For example, in Petro Vietnam, and you know, Petro Vietnam has many companies and sometimes they uh, should say, for example, you uh, work for BSP at the uh, middle town yesterday, he sold it to us to learn the uh, experience. Yeah. But more um, uh, yeah. in more convenient for us. Yeah. Uh, I would like to hear uh, from you, for example, you said that you have many experience in the, uh, in the world, right? Yeah. In the uh, Asia, for example, yeah. BDT, BDT, uh, NOC, PTT, uh, Rayong, people, people, fashion board. Yeah, actually, so they're currently doing, uh, one of the partners is currently doing a, a workshop in Rayong for a lot of uh, what actually. Uh, in Rayong? In Rayong. Yeah. Uh, but I can, I can look up a list for you, uh, and then we can go through it in a uh, if you want. I can check our database for some more specific uh, clients and projects. Yeah. Now we can discuss it in the break if you want to. Yeah, and then uh, yeah. you can look at this PC. Or yeah. 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 Y
So uh, when you want to manage risk, uh, you maybe uh, you're knowledgeable enough to uh, do it in a, in a specific way which suits you. However, we also know of things like specific standards or regulations which help us to perform or do something like that on a specific level. And within risk management, this is ISO 31000. Yes. So uh, the ISO 31000 covers a several number of topics, starting with uh, establishing the context. And after that, uh, we continue with the risk identification that we did yesterday, and then continue to the risk analysis. So the bow tie is part of the risk analysis. It will help you analyze the risk. <coughs> so the second or the next step is risk evaluation. Here we have analyzed and now we want to assess this. We want to give our subject matter expertise assessment. So after we analyze the risk and we evaluate it and know which risks are uh, the largest concerns for us, we can continue with risk treatment, which will help us to um, make it lower or, or manage it in a better way. Uh, a part of this process also includes to monitor and review. So we need to keep uh, a pace or keep uh, contact with how we are uh, doing this process and see whether that's good or not good. The final part is communication and consultation because when we understand what we are doing and we know if we are performing like we want, we also need to share this to be compliant with this standard. So if we would use this to manage our risk and we want to use software to help us, we would be able to say that most of those fields are covered by CG uh, software solutions. So from risk analysis up to risk treatment, both IXP helps you to cover those topics. Monitoring and reviewing can be done with incident XP, audit XP, and on a corporate level with both IXP server. <coughs> Đánh giá, hoạt động, quản lý rủi ro, xử 
Communication is predominantly done with both a server and both AXP using different reports and filters. And finally, the hazard uh, or the risk identification, you can do it on a board, you can do it on paper. If you want to use tools, you could use a module of the server for this as well. So the only thing which isn't covered by software, that's because it cannot be covered by software, is establishing the context. Establishing the context is predominantly your own subject matter expertise. As you know what you want to manage, where you want to start and where you want to end with your risk management topic. <coughs> So to give an example um, with the driving a car, if my context is that I want to manage driving a car in Vietnam, I would not include conditions which only apply in the Netherlands. So, risk identification. Usually, uh, we start with a process which will help us to identify which risks we have in an organization and which are really important. <coughs> a hazard is one of those methods which, which can help you to identify those major accident scenarios or hazards. So if we would look at three different topics, which one of those is most dangerous, most hazardous? Pressurized hydrocarbons. 
nhưng mà nhìn chung thì rõ ràng là làm việc với thì có bọn rất cao là tình huống của người dẫn lên và nghiêm trọng and um, based on this I would say I will not create a bow tie for hot drinks in the office or walk, uh, walking with a cup of coffee So building a, a bow tie, building a good bow tie might take some time and therefore we cannot achieve bow ties for every single hazard within the organization. So we begin with the setup of our own criteria for our own organization. The red zone is something we think is not acceptable for us. The green zone is considered an acceptable zone to be in. And the yellow one is considered a large. And this can look different for every single organization. So this as a risk matrix is often used during the assessment process and we have a frequency line, so how often will it happen, and a severity line, if it happens how bad is it? So after we decide what our criteria is and how the matrix should look like, we can apply that to different categories. So we sometimes see that this one is used for safety and we have an environment and then we might have assets or business, money. So now when you think about where you need to build a boat out for, you should see it in a matrix as well. So if we have impact and frequency, and we have a zone where something happens a lot or often, and it's also very uh, damaging, so let's say every second time I fly an airplane it will crash, then it's an unacceptable hazard. So therefore, in these cases, we would not build a bow tie, you would usually come up with a substitute operation, substitute. 
với những sự kiện mà vừa thường xuyên mà vừa nghiêm trọng thì chúng ta phải đưa ra những cái giải pháp thay thế những giải pháp mang tính chất thay thế như ra không có phân tích mô thành ví dụ như sự kiện mà lớn như là thứ hai chuyến là một chuyến ra vào núi thì như vậy chúng ta phải bỏ ngay cái phương tiện đấy chứ không thể là ngồi một tập tiếp công thang gì cho mày. So on the other side we have low risk, something which doesn't happen so often and if it happens isn't a large impact. Còn những sự kiện nó mới xảy ra và mỗi lần xảy ra sẽ không có hậu quả đáng kể gì cả. We might consider this a waste of time to build bow ties for this. So, two zones for which we want to build bow ties are maybe things which are a large impact but don't happen that often, like an explosion. Or things which will happen very often, however, the impact will be limited. So, often occupational safety. <laughs> and after that, usually we end up with a list of different identified hazards where we know that. For some, we want to have bow ties, and others we might consider are not major enough at this moment. So, it is important to think about that this picture is only for now. Over time, something which is not that major or a big deal can become a big deal. Therefore, we need to review them on a regular basis. And in the end, you end up with a low priority register and a high priority register, as an example. So, what I'm going to do now is show you how you could use a template, an Excel template, and transform that into a bow tie. You only have to follow it, so you are aware. For the moment, you need to do it yourself in the future. So the table, the workshop table you had here yesterday, you can also build that in Excel. And different organizations have slightly different tables with columns and rows slightly different setup. So I will just use an example of uh, uh, an Excel sheet we have and we have modified and you have also received on your USB as a starting point. So we will go through the installation process a little bit later when you need to work on the software. For now, I'm just going to start it up and just introduce you to how it looks and how I'm going to go from an Excel to a bow tie. So when you start up the software, on the left side, there is a list. And this list 
is a list of containers which contain information which you use within your organization. <coughs> So this can include, for instance, the hierarchy of departments and job roles underneath, but also effectiveness values which you want to use when assessing your controls. So once you've built a bow tie, you have the possibility to link those to any of the elements and it will help you to understand which of those elements is stronger, less strong, or who's accountable for something. So here you can build the diagram and this is something we're going to cover later. Everybody will build its own diagram. But for now, I'm just going to open an Excel spreadsheet which looks similar to what you had built yesterday. Click on the button to convert it in something the software can read, 
And now I can save this. And if I now open the software and import that Excel sheet, 